Welcome everybody. Inshallah, we'll be starting uh, shortly. We're just waiting on a final technical green light. Welcome, welcome everybody. Inshallah, we'll be giving in one second. Bismillah. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh, everybody. Welcome, welcome. As usual, uh, let us know, inshallah ta'ala, where you're logging in from on this beautiful, beautiful Wednesday. Safiya knows the program immediately. Safiya from Yorkshire. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome, everybody. Okay, so. <clears throat> Uh, we're really excited to be starting this beautiful session today with Dr. Umar Sudeiman. And uh, before we begin, as usual, we just want to start with our salams, where you're from, as well as the um, share. Share the khair as usual before we begin. Take a minute, inshallah ta'ala, send this link into your WhatsApp groups, your iMessage groups, your Facebook groups, your family groups, your fan groups, inshallah ta'ala, that we all benefit. Today we're going to be announcing something exciting, inshallah ta'ala, and something new. So as the link says on the screen, or as the text says on the screen, take a moment to share the stream, inshallah ta'ala. We got Amira from India. We have Basira from Oakville. We have Javed from India as well. MashaAllah, the chats are flying. I'm assuming this is our Ragat from Faith Essentials from Orlando and Siti uh, from Michigan. So today, Zakabullah khair, everybody, keep them coming. And uh, just may Allah reward everybody who took a moment to share this video as well. We're live on a number of pages right now. Um, today, inshallah ta'ala, we have Dr. Umar Sudeiman and Sheikh Umar is um, someone who is obviously the president of Yaqeen Institute. He has been an instructor with the Maghrib Institute since around 2013, alhamdulillah. He's taught a number of courses, uh, incredible courses through the Maghrib, such as the spiritual practices of the early Muslim generations. It was called Behind the Scenes. And then he taught a seminar called uh, As You Are, regarding your spiritual personality, discovering your pers spiritual personality. And Sheikh Umar as well taught uh, another seminar called The Big Picture, studying uh, the life and the dunya through Sahih al-Bukhari. And so today uh, we're welcoming Dr. Umar Sudeiman to talk about a new topic, which is uh, faith and hypocrisy. Welcome, Dr. Umar. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How are you doing, Sheikh? I'm not good, man. How are you? Alhamdulillah. I have to admit, this is the most tired I've ever seen you, like, in hosting a <laughs> It's like, yeah, here we go again. <laughs> no, man, we're good. Done this many classes. And then... <coughs> I see some excitement from you, man. You're usually, like, much This, is, this is as exciting as exciting gets. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm happy to be, uh, to, be, to be with you in this session, inshallah ta'ala. So, as share. always, Jazakallah khair. Always good to be with you. Sheikh, the topic of hypocrisy and faith. So the big announcement uh, that we've been talking about, that we've been hinting at, we actually haven't announced it yet. And so okay. I think it should, it should be best coming from you. This okay. is your newest course mm -hmm. with Al Maghrib Institute. And out of every topic that you could have taught, this is the one that you have decided to launch online. And what is it, Sheikh? So it is a topic on the qualities of the believers versus the qualities of the hypocrites in the Quran. So a comparison between the hypocrites and the believers, how Allah describes them. And then we contrast uh, each of those qualities uh, and talk about how we can realize the character of the believer rather than the character of the hypocrite, how we nurture belief and how we uh, fight hypocrisy within ourselves. So faith or fake. 
uh, is the new course, Alhamdulillah Rabbil um, Very happy to to be presenting it. And it's it's something that kind of brings together um, a few things from my interests, um, you know, in terms of research. I love talking about the Sahaba, obviously. And you can't understand the tafsir of the ayat without understanding how the Prophet Sallallahu interacted with those verses, as well as how the Sahaba interacted with those verses. And the companions were interacting with the verses being revealed about hypocrisy in real time, right? And so they were uh, seeing a greater exposure of the class known as the Munafiqeen at the time, the hypocrites of the time. And at the same time, asking the Prophet Sallallahu about how those qualities uh, apply to them in their own pursuit of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and staying away from hypocrisy. So it's kind of a, uh, it, it brings history, brings tafsir, uh, tazkiyah uh, all together. Uh, and that's kind of how behind the scenes was as well, right? When we talked about the spiritual practices of the salaf, you take the practical uh, steps to improve your spirituality based upon how the best to ever do it, did it. And so that's how this course works as well, inshallah ta'ala. Um, they are the implementation of the qualities of the believers. They are those whom Allah is pleased with. And the hypocrites are those who have earned Allah's anger. And you had the best generation that existed around the Prophet wasallam, and certainly the worst hypocrites. I think it's actually important to, to say that because, you know, uh, to be a hypocrite while the Prophet wasallam, is amongst you, um, is, is a great sign um, of, of deviance. And so the fact that these people plotted and planned, and this is the worst of the hypocrites, right? So you had the best of the Muslims and the worst of the hypocrites living in the same city of Medina at the same time. So it's kind of like as the Quran is coming down upon the Prophet and it is Al-Furqan, it's dividing believers from disbeliever. It is also dividing the sincere from the, the worst of, of hypocrites. And we get to sort of fit ourselves uh, within that scheme, inshallah ta'ala, hopefully leaning more towards what we learned from the companions of the Prophet sallam, and staying away from the traits of the hypocrites. You know, um, I had a person ask me a question recently. And they asked, they said, is hypocrisy still around? Like, is this something that only existed during the time of the Prophet sallam? Like, why would a person be a hypocrite now? Like, how does that even work? And I, I was kind of shocked at the question itself. Like, what do you mean is hypocrisy still now? Like, where do you not see it? You know, Imam Ahmed, one time a man, you know, had said, you know, can you make du'a for that the hypocrites be removed? And he said, then you're not going to find any anybody to be in your company in Baghdad. Like everybody would. So the traits of hypocrisy are so prevalent. How How important is it for a person to be able to recognize those traits? I mean, it's so significant that it led Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala anhu and Hanba radiallahu anhu to the Prophet sallam, claiming hypocrisy. How many times do you have to be guaranteed Jannah to where you don't fear hypocrisy anymore? Yeah. How many of us have received the guarantee from Jannah or have been told by the Prophet sallam, Ni'mat Rajul, what an amazing person you are or have been praised by the Messenger sallam? None of us, right? None of us have been guaranteed Jannah. None of us have been praised by the Prophet sallam, in this fashion. Yet you find that these people uh, feared hypocrisy more than anyone else, despite being the furthest from it. And that's actually wh where you want to come. You want to get to the point where you are so far from it, yet so fearful of it. Fearful of it in a way that causes you to distance yourself further from it. Uh, not that that allows you to or that causes you despair and to sink into it. Um, it becomes sort of a self-fulfilling prophecy in that regard. So hypocrisy exists in every time. And I think that, uh, in fact, in our times, it will exist more. Why? Because you have a general decrease in faith. And then you have an increase in the devices of hypocrisy. Right. So every generation that comes after the next naturally suffers from a decline in terms of faith. Yet the means of deception and superficiality that exist today only make hypocrisy that much more of a problem. So, uh, you know, hypocrites, of course, there are those that are intentional hypocrites, and then there are those that are struggling with traits of hypocrisy. Absolutely. Okay? 
So intentional hypocrites have more means to exist now. Uh, I don't think many intentional hypocrites would take a course on how to fight hypocrisy because they are settled within it. They cause chaos and havoc within the Muslim community. They try to undermine uh, the khayr that exists, the good that exists uh, within this ummah. They exist in every time. But those that are struggling with the traits of hypocrisy, um, there are really more ways for us to create versions of ourselves in this day and age than any other time in human history. Therefore, to have multiple personalities uh, is, is easier now than any other time in history, right? To portray something of you that is not true of you and to uh, be different people in different places. So I think that that's why it becomes this much more important for us. And, and by the way, I, I start with myself. You know, that's actually the point, subhanAllah, that you find from the Salaf there was a constant healthy meditation on nifaq, on hypocrisy. So mm -hmm. we have to keep on meditating on it so that we make sure that we don't fall into it. And that's why there's such uh, value and merit in constantly reciting the verses of hypocrisy uh, and asking yourself how you stay away from it. You know, I'll give you this example, by the way. Uh, you know, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud anhu has a very famous statement where he says that we used to take 10 verses of the Qur'an at a time. We'd read them, perfect the recitation, reflect on them, get the meaning right, memorize, and then move on to the next 10. So what is Ibn Mas'ud anhu doing with the first few pages of the Qur'an, which immediately dive into hypocrisy? And what are the companions doing with those verses, right? So this, this particular exercise is, is literally, we, we take the verses of belief, the verses of hypocrisy, put them side by side, contextualize them historically, and then derive practical benefit for the presence and get very, very, very personal, inshallah ta'ala, as we look into those verses. So when you say a couple of things, so this course... For those of you who are just joining us, this is a new course by Shaykh Omar Suleiman on faith or fake. It is about the traits of belief and hypocrisy in the Quran and the seal of the Prophet Sallallahu So you see him even in this right now. He just mentioned all of those, all of those, um, uh, those. Uh, what's the word that I'm looking for? Beats, right? The Quran, the seal of the Prophet Sallallahu and you mentioned personalizing it. So when you say uh, personalizing it. What does that mean? Well, every course that I've taught for Al Maghrib um, has been about personal reflection. Um, and that's intentional, and I'm grateful for that opportunity. Um, Meaning the student personally reflects, or it's your personal reflection? No, for the student to personally reflect. Mm -hmm. But in order for the student to personally reflect, I have to personally respect, reflect as a teacher as well, right? Mm -hmm. So the student to personally reflect. So. You know, my first course with Al Maghrib was behind the scenes talking about the spiritual practices of the Salaf. Why? Because people tend to remember stories um, and then the practical benefits stick with those stories if you teach them right, if you structure those practical benefits properly. And so, you know, Ihya uh, Ulum which becomes summarized and then summarized again to Mukhtasar bin Hazar Qasidin, um, you know, the. the it's the roadmap that those that were determined to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took to root out destructive flaws and then to implement uh, prophetic practices, right? In order to achieve their highest rank with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah Azza wa Jal gives us the stories of prophets in the Quran, right? But Allah doesn't just give us the stories of prophets in the Quran, mm. okay? So with those stories come qualities and even when the qualities are mentioned independent of stories in the Qur'an, there are stories in the seerah, right, that really help us understand what those qualities are referring to. So the hypocrites, you know, you, I don't want to say you can't understand, but I, I think you can't fully appreciate the verses of hypocrisy without knowing the context of the hypocrites in Medina and the way that these verses were coming down and the way the companions were interacting with these verses. But just like you can't really appreciate it unless you know the seerah, you can't really implement it unless you project these qualities on yourself in your alone time at a very personal level and ask yourself, do I have this problem? So 
I think provoking self-reflection is a feature of this course, inshallah ta'ala. It's a feature of every course I've gotten to teach with the Maghrib, alhamdulillah, I mean, even Salman al-Farisi, right? The reason why I taught on Salman al-Farisi for the Maghrib was because he's the ultimate truth seeker. Like if you're making excuses with seeking the truth, Salman al-Farisi just, uh, you know, he, he, he just grabs your excuses from Persia and just throws them out the window for you, you know, before you can even start to make them. <laughs> so it's like, this is, this is the point, you know, that we've got to um, look at ourselves in light of these verses. And alhamdulillah, we, we spend time with the verses about the believers too. So it's, uh, you got the verses of the hypocrites, then the verses of the believers, and we don't do it chronologically. Instead, what we do is we take verses about the hypocrites in a particular domain and then we take the verses that refer to the believers in the opposite fashion and then we study root causes and manifestations so it's uh almaghrib.online is where you can find the course it's starting launching today inshallah ta'ala it's at almaghrib.online but i want to ask you as far as the the qualities of the believers over is it 15 qualities on each side that you look at 15 of the believers and 15 yeah. of the hypocrites which quality of the believers, if there is one, stood out to you the most? And whether it stood out to you as far as um, what you aspire to have, or it stood out to you in the sense that it's something that's, alhamdulillah, prevalent amongst the Muslims now. It's a quality that you constantly see in the Muslim community. Mm -hmm. And then the opposite end, which quality of the hypocrites is one that stands out to you for either of, of those two reasons? It's a tough question, um, but just immediately, if I'm being honest, as you ask, uh, mm. those people who uphold their trusts, they uphold covenants, they uphold trusts, they're people of integrity. Um, and the opposite, you know, the, the believers, uh, their level of deception is yukhadi'oon Allah wa rasoola. They would even go to the extent of trying to deceive Allah and his messenger sallallahu alayhi wa yeah. The reason why it, it that stands out to me the most is because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi described the day of judgment or the coming of the day of judgment with ila'atul amana, uh, the loss of trust, right? To the point that you have to go search for someone and when you come across a person like, think about how amazing it is when you meet someone who doesn't cheat now, who doesn't backbite, who doesn't lie, who doesn't gossip. Like, these are basic human values, right? But they're emphasized and refined through Islam. But like, you find someone who's honest. You find someone that you can trust. You know, and that's the hadith, right? That it would become so, uh, it would become so rare that, it, that like, if you find someone, it's like, hey, look, in the filqam, you know, in this, in this group of people, uh, in this in this valley, in this area, you know, there's Rajul and Amina. There's there's an honest person there. Let's yeah. go find the honest person, right? So, yeah. I think that honesty and integrity um, uh, are, are you know honesty as a quality. And the Prophet Sallallahu was a Sadiq al Amin. So it's actually interesting, you know, if you think about the Hadith. I don't know if I talk about this in the course. I can't recall, but I don't I don't think I do. But the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam describes his coming in the Day of Judgment like these two fingers, right? So the beginning of this religion is with as sadiq al-Amin, right? That the Prophet is the, the honest one, the trustworthy one. And then the day of judgment. So the Prophet says that the, the time between, you know, uh, as sababa the middle, the, 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 the index. index finger and the middle finger, right? But the time between his coming and the day of judgment is like the, the distance between these two. The religion starts with his coming as a Sadiq al Amin. The world ends with when there is no Sidq and no Amana in the world anymore. It's actually very interesting when you when you think about that with the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He is a Sadiq al Amin. He is the most trustworthy, honest, truthful person. And the day of judgment comes when there is no trustworthiness, no truthfulness, no honesty left on earth. And of course, the foundation of true integrity is faith. And so that is simply now the manifestation of the entire disappearance of faith at that point. Because people you know, don't fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala anymore. One of, the, um, one of the things that's very interesting when it comes to hypocrisy is how the Quran describes the hypocrites in that they are very attractive. They're attractive physically. They're attractive in their eloquence. They're attractive in their argumentation. 
And Allah says, of you are those who listen to them. And so one of the one of the things that I always find people talking about uh, or talking to people about is the idea of spreading ideas and platforming people on social media just because you like something that they said or just because there's a tweet that you agree with. And a lot of times I'll I'll just it just takes an extra second to just click this is a this is a statement that I agree with. It's a nice statement, sure, seem, seemingly benign or positive. But then if you actually click behind on that person, you'll find that this person is 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 a supporter or a promoter of an agenda that you just can't agree with as a Muslim. And so that level of superficial support that sometimes the believers get actually um, they get duped into or they simply are unwittingly uh, proponents of becomes a means of the support of the Munafiqeen or the support of Fahsha and Munkar and all of these things that they create. Absolutely. I don't know if you're asking a question or <laughs> for a reflection. I was, just, um, I was just kind of reflecting on that, but... Um, it's a great reflection and may Allah protect us. Again, I think the point is, is that uh, you know, I, I actually recently just did a reflection on this. Do you fear envy? When you ask someone, do you fear envy? The, the, immediately they think, yeah, you know, I, I fear that person putting the evil eye on me and I fear that person did this to me and did that to me. But really the, the core fear of envy should be, do you fear envying uh, someone else? Because that would be a spiritual harm for you in the hereafter. And so hypocrisy is to give you a lens the, the hyper vigilance with hypocrisy is to give you a lens on yourself before anyone else, right? Mm. If you immediately, it's like if you're sitting in the khutbah and the imam starts talking about any spiritual disease and you're going, mm -hmm, I, I hope that person's listening. Five rows back in Juma, I know they're there. You know, I hope they're listening. Uh, I hope this person's watching this khutbah right now. I hope this person's hearing this and I hope this person's hearing that. You imagine Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu lives at the same time as Abdullah ibn Ubay bin Sadud. And these people hear the Prophet them talk about hypocrisy and they start crying. And they wonder if the Prophet them is talking about them. But Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu is like, Ya Rasulullah, is it, is it me? <laughs> Asking Hudayf ibn Yaman radiallahu anhu, is my name there? So it's, uh, it's really stunning, subhanAllah, in that regard, right? So... Uh, surely there, there are signs we can take to protect ourselves from the harm of hypocrisy and superficiality um, as they exist around us. But I think the primary primary purpose, not that you were suggesting otherwise, right? It's a, it's a fact that you're putting forth the benefit, but primarily uh, we've got to look at ourselves, inshallah. Jimmy, um, as far as the actual um, breakdown that you have, how much of it was inspired by uh, simply going through the text and, and reflecting versus, uh, I know your normal habit is to do an extensive amount of, of, of research before. Do you feel like this course is, is uh, it was developed mostly through research of tafsir and books of sirah, in which case, which were they? Or uh, I think you also mentioned, you know, going and, and kind of just creating your own connections, your own reflections, your own notes. So the best tafsir is sirah, right? The best tafsir is sirah. Um, why? Because you, especially if you get the, the, the description of the Prophet Sallallahu of something, as well as the way the companions then, as a community, interacted with it. Uh, when it comes to the hypocrites in particular, Munafiqeen in particular, so is it, even when it like when it comes to the traits of the believers, it's not as obvious. When it comes to the traits of the hypocrites, there is not a passage of the Quran that starts talking about the hypocrites that you can't pinpoint to a particular time in the seerah of the Prophet Sallallahu and speaking about very particular circumstances. As for the believers, it's actually um, you know more general, right? So you have to cast the characteristics of the believers against those. But uh, I'd say that my initial period of research started more with uh, the verses of the hypocrites and then when they were revealed. So looking at the particular asbab al uh, the, the reasons for revelation, the periods of revelation, and then finding the qualities of the believers. Because like I said, it's not like, you know, 
the last ten of Surah Al Furqan came down because this happened, or the first mm-hmm. ten of Mu'minun came down because this happened, right? Whereas Al Baqarah, um, Surah Al Munafiqun, Surah Al Tawbah, like it came because this happened in this year in response to this. So it was more of starting with the tafsir this, and then looking at the seerah, which gave us asbab and nuzul, the reasons for revelation. And then finding the qualities of the believers that contradict those, and then stories of Sahaba that uh, lived out those qualities in the most beautiful of ways. I think one of the uh, things that is exciting is that this is, as far as the Maghrib goes, this is your first uh, course that has to rely so heavily on tafsir. So uh, your Sahih al-Bukhari course was a more of a hadith course. Your uh, behind the scenes is more of biographies and siyar. And True. this is uh, your first delf. So we're looking forward to seeing, you know, the, the tafsir muscles being flexed, inshallah ta'ala, on this one. You know, oh, the tafsir muscles, man. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, no, Sheikh. Let's say Imam Al Tabari. It's not Sheikh Adur, but like, oh, you know, okay, you know, okay. guy taking videos of, of, of the guy lifting the weights, you know, so that's all. <laughs> I mean, just the that's already been done. <laughs> MashaAllah. But I mean, there's a lot of a lot of beauty in these verses. I mean, just a lot of beautiful symbolism and powerful. Like, I remember in Surah Al Baqarah when Allah gives that metaphor. And just to give uh, to, to what you were saying, for those who might not have, inshallah, you learn in the class as well, but. Like the first three verses, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Surah Al-Baqarah talks about the believers. And then two verses to the disbelievers. And then some 13 verses about the hypocrites. Allah says, Humul adu Allah says, they are the enemy, so be aware of them. And so one of the things that's really amazing is how little we talk about hypocrites in our normal discourse. Like how many classes and how many, how many events or how many programs have you seen, you know, in the past 10 years even, that are devoted to this topic. And so this is a, a really unique topic. Um, and it's one that we're really glad, inshallah ta'ala, to, to be launching with you. I wonder if, uh, yeah, if we were to put out a course, am I a hypocrite? A question mark, how many people would attend sign up for that course? Well, that was one of the names that we were thinking of, to be honest. And oh, then, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, th- that that's the reason why it was shut down because <laughs> <laughs> like that would have been way too confrontational. People would have felt way too awkward about it. You know? I'm a, I'm, 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 I feel attacked. Is yeah, that I'm attacked. Uh, did you uh, did you did you watch the uh, course yet, Sheikh Hamam? Not yet. Song? Not yet. Inshallah. Okay. Yeah, but looking forward to it, inshallah. inshallah. Uh, the course for those of you who are still just joining us, it's on Almagrib online, and when you access the course, you'll get lifetime access. So it's. Um, over over 12 hours of content with Sheikh Umar, inshallah, going over everything that he's described and more, inshallah. And then you have lifetime access as well as a number of live Q&As with Sheikh Umar. So you, it's at your own pace. It's a beautiful portal online. You watch the videos. They're recorded in a studio in Dallas uh, with Sheikh Umar and a number of live students. And you, yeah, you watch it at your own pace and then you attend the lives and you should ask Sheikh Umar your questions. And it's a beautiful experience. And you can come back to it again and again and again over the years whenever you want to check your iman and get those personal reflections. Inshallah. Inshallah. So, Sheikh Umar, uh, I've been seeing you a lot over the past couple of weeks. And part of that is because we are, inshallah, uh, this is a quick side tangent before we get back to this. But we're actually launching a podcast together. Yep. And this podcast, Sheikh Ahmed has launched a, a YouTube channel and, you know, he was, he needed a, a co-host and he's like, you know what, there's nobody who I enjoy spending time with more than Ammar. It's true. So, <laughs> You're not as intimidating as Sheikh Abdullah Duro. I'm not as intimidating, no problem, inshallah. So we're, we've been hosting, it's called After Hours, it hasn't been released yet, but we'll be releasing our first episode Inshallah ta'ala pretty soon, inshallah. So you can look out for that on Sheikh Umar's uh, channel. And if you want to give him a breakdown of what After Hours is about real quick. Yeah, so Omar Suleiman Official, if you go to YouTube, I, I launched the channel, Omar Suleiman Official, <laughs> Sheikh Umar, Zawla Khair. Um, you know, help, helping uh, not just get it, getting it going, but also, you know, being just core to Alhamdulillah, asking the right questions and allowing us to uh, experience uh, some serious reflection uh, with some of the pioneers of the da'wah, uh, 
um, in America, so in North America. So we're looking at basically the the present uh, of the da'wah as it exists today and sort of how the past, especially here in North America, um, with some of the pioneers of the da'wah, set us uh, on the trajectory that we're on today and allows us to sort of look at the history so we don't forget our elders, but at the same time, inshallah, we learn the best from them and learn from our own, inshallah ta'ala, uh, curves and, uh, and, and, and trails and, and try to put forth the best da'wah in the night ta'ala for the future. So I'm trying to be ambiguous, to be very honest with you, just wait for the announcement. But almost the amount official YouTube channel, inshallah. I'll be launching it very soon, inshallah. That's with uh, Sheikh Hamad and myself. It'll be an ongoing podcast, inshallah. And I do, of course, really, really enjoy uh, Sheikh Hamad. Uh, Likewise, Zakallah. Even when you and Sheikh Yasser just sit and talk about Valley Ranch for 20 minutes straight, yes, <laughs> it's enjoyable. Uh, Did you we see his cowboy hat? Uh, yeah, I saw his cowboy hat. I'm very back. Uh, I mean, once you start wearing a cowboy hat, that's a little bit too much Texan for me. That's just uh, yeah. He, he and then when he wore his. Uh, Abaya for Salah, his jubba with the cowboy hat. He looked like the Undertaker. It was pretty cool. <laughs> I was like, let's just be clear. This isn't a Halloween outfit uh, at Valley Ranch. He just had to put a jubba yeah, at, at our food He was wearing a cowboy hat. I was like, oh, man. So, Sheikh, uh, we want to wrap up, inshallah, but we got some quick uh, fire questions here that I got to knock out from the chat. We have Yasmin. Where do I get info on the course? It's at almaghrib.online. Almaghrib.online is where you can get info. On the course, um, let me see here. Uh, are the courses recorded, pre-recorded, or can I join in Dallas? No, the recording happened in Dallas uh, a long time ago, but you can join the course now online. It's it's all recorded except for the live sessions with Jeff Umar, where you'll be able to ask him your questions directly. This is a beautiful reflection. Look at the state of our leaders, and they are a reflection of the people. So we must all be quite flawed. Alhamdulillah, we do have to obey a chance to change. What do you think about that, Dr. Omar? Yeah, I think that's absolutely... Look, there, there is certainly a um, an element of truth to this idea, right? Because even when the Prophet Sallallahu talked about uh, amana, the loss of, of trust, uh, he started with the leaders, alayhi salatu wasalam. Sanfani min al-Nas, Sufyan rahimahullah said there are two groups of people if they are rectified, then everyone else will be rectified. And if they're corrupted, then everyone else will be corrupted. And he said, Al-Muluk uh, ulama your political leaders and your religious leaders, right? So there's certainly um, something for us to really reflect upon. However, again, personal reflection. Uh, the Sirah has a special way of entrusting every single human being with their own path, not just to individual salvation, but to actually inspiring the community towards better, no matter how insignificant they may see themselves in the overall scheme of community. And so, in Allah, uh, you want to see change, be that change uh, yourself, whether you're a leader or not. And so at some point, the leaders reflect the people, and at some point, the people reflect the leaders. So all of us have to root out, inshallah, ta'ala, hypocrisy and... Uh, insist upon bidna nahi ta'ala uh, iman insist upon belief uh, until it becomes our ultimate reality <coughs> Sheikh, i have one last question to end with and that is the relationship between hypocrisy and imposter syndrome so you have this idea of i'm not qualified to do anything i'm not qualified to give a halaqa i'm not qualified to teach anybody anything i'm not qualified to volunteer i'm not qualified to lead salat i'm not qualified to do any of that because if i fear hypocrisy for myself then who am i to to even try to take a position of leadership in any capacity in the community is, is that something that is a a valid feeling is it something that shaitan casts in the heart of a slave What's, what's that relationship? So shaitan wants to disconnect you from good, right? At the end of the day, shaitan wants to either poison your intention or paralyze your action. So if he can't do one, he'll try to do the other. And ultimately, he really wants to do both. Um, sometimes he'll play off of a sincere intention. 
that you don't feel like you are worthy of doing any of these things and in the process shut you down um and who loses you lose the opportunity to do good deeds and the people lose as well the benefit that comes from you in that regard when it comes to imposter syndrome um first and foremost the believer does not seek positions of prominence does not seek the public eye they do them as necessity when they are forced into them so they're necessary extensions of roles sometimes but they never can become the pursuit themselves right so even teaching um you know anything publicly um someone else should have put you in that position you shouldn't have forced yourself into that position because your talab should have been ilm. you should have been seeking knowledge and if at some point your teachers or, or community uh, elders or whatever it may be asked you to teach and put you in a position to teach without you trying to force your way into teaching force your way into a program then alhamdulillah but seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never feel like you really deserve that pulpit right so that's what teaching when it comes to any position that of leadership any position of of prominence any position of public good uh, the idea is that the drive has to be something other than the public eye so much so that the public eye just becomes something in the background rather than the primary driver and so that's why the drive has to be very purposeful very intentional and if that's your drive then you also won't be deluded by the public eye into thinking that you're something that you're not so it's good to still feel deficient like there was you know, if you asked Umar bin Khattab عنه, what he thought of himself as a Khalifa, just think about the conversation. I, I don't want to project the words and put them on the mouth of Sayyidina Umar عنه, but I think we can all agree he was a pretty good Khalifa, <laughs> an incredible human being, an incredible leader. But if you asked Umar عنه, what he thought of himself as a Khalifa, he probably would have belittled himself and it would have come from a place of actually feeling deficient. Now, with that being said, Umar anhu also did not run away when Abu Bakr anhu appointed him as the Khalifa. He took it, he cried, he never quite felt worthy, and that was the ingredient to his greatness, was that he was sincerely trying to be worthy his entire life, and in the process, became one of the greatest of all time. Right. And in fact, the dream of the Messenger وسلم, where he uh, saw Abu Bakr al-Siddiq drawing some water and uh, he said Umar عنه, then came and took the bucket and he took water to everybody and all the animals and was so inspiring in how he was taking water to everyone, right? That's the leadership of Umar عنه. so uh, perhaps Umar عنه could not draw as deep as Abu Bakr al-Siddiq from the well because Abu Bakr عنه was superior to Umar عنه. But Umar was able to spread that water to more people um, and to do more with it with the years that he had in leadership and in power, though he never felt like he ever really arrived, which is beautiful because it keeps you striving. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants you to strive and wants you to be sincere. Shaitan wants you to be insincere and to be incapacitated, right? So you got to fight both of those off. Uh, we're going to end, inshallah ta'ala, Sheikh, with uh, two things. Number one, final uh, plug. It's at maghrib.online forward slash faith for the course, inshallah ta'ala, with Dr. Umar. Click on the link, check out the page, inshallah ta'ala, listen to his welcoming video, and inshallah, we'll look forward to seeing you in the course with Dr. Umar very soon, inshallah ta'ala, uh, for the live sessions with him. And number two, Fatima asked a question that I think would be great for you to end with, and that, and that is advice for implementing what we learn from the course in real life. Um, this might seem like a very super simplistic answer, but I'll say it anyway. Journaling, mm. uh, marking your progress. Uh, it's We just don't do that stuff anymore, right? It's... I have I have my to-do list apps, right? So it's always checkbox, checkbox, checkbox for the day. But like how often do we journal our progress and then go Sit back and look at it? Yeah. Capture our progress, capture our thoughts, capture where we were coming from, capture our feelings in a particular time of our lives. And then go back and look at that, right? 
and try to build on it. Uh, I think that it's a it's a lost uh, art. Something, frankly, I'm trying to get back into. I'm not not really there. So to not be a hypocrite, I'm not regular with it yet, but I am enjoying it when I do do it. Well, there's a there was a period of time where people journaled a lot over the past ten years, but it was on uh, their statuses on Facebook. So that was people's journals. Know. That's true, but it's public. You so have I'm your own private thoughts. You know, if you write out your private thoughts right now and you just visit them, revisit five years from now, if you're still alive, uh, you'll be surprised. You know, mm -hmm. and perhaps you might even, I mean, there, there's good in that. You can um, reflect on your low point and recapture your most sincere uh, moments of reflection and say, how do I get back to where I was there? Who, who always used to encourage journaling is who we named uh, or who we dedicated the podcast to, Sheikh Hamd al-Sharif, rahimahullah who is a consistent proponent of journaling. Hmm. So with that, inshallah, Sheikh, we thank you for your time. Look forward to seeing you on the other side of the Al-Maghrib portal, inshallah, for those who are taking the class. Jazakum al khair, Sheikh, and uh, looking forward to seeing you on the podcast very soon. Allah, you're very good. Jazakum al khair.